Okay, good morning. Let's start uh, today's uh, session. The first talk will be by uh, Dr. Um, Chakrabarti, and his topic uh, is the solution of the applications in Kernelman geometry. Well, are you supposed to take this? Okay, I was supposed to talk uh, on accretion disks around black holes. The, my first talk was on accretion, but uh, I had to switch it for some reason. Tomorrow I'll give the same talk uh, on talk at 11:45, and I will take a long, a little longer time. So um, it will be on tomorrow. Today I am going to talk on the solution of the Dirac equation in Carr black hole geometry. It is not in uh, Carr Newman, but it is. <laughs> So car black hole geometry. Uh, this has some history. Uh, of course, Professor uh, Chandrasekhar. He, I can just. It is a good thing. You, know, you don't have to make transparency. You can just show it. If Professor Chandrasekhar uh, wrote this paper, 1976, in car geometry. Uh, of course, uh, he. In 76, it came out in proceedings of Royal Society of London, but of course he did not solve the problem. He simply mm, separated the equation into theta component and radial component. Okay, so the and the rest one has to do with computer. So and he doesn't want to touch any computer or calculator. So he said that's it. This is the solution. Anybody can now solve it. I have just separated the equation. That's it. And but he still calls it the solution of the Dirac equation. So in 84, 82, 83 when I was working with him in Chicago, I uh, solved the uh, theta dependent part of the equation. So there are two equations, one is the theta, com yesterday uh, uh, Mr. Um, Cherubi Cherubini talked about uh, the, how to separate the equations very quickly by using uh, map, maple and so on. So, the, the, there are two second order differential equation, one is in the theta, theta direction and the other is in the radial direction. So in 83, I solved the, uh, the equation uh, on mass dependent spheroidal harmonics of spin one half. That was, um, that, that was uh, um, in fact I even found some exact solutions of the problem. So you start with the same equation that uh, yesterday talked about. This is the these are the two equations. One is ca the coupling between the spin minus half and the spin uh, plus half, and then the other one is uh, from spin plus minus half to sorry spin plus half to spin minus half. So these are the Dirac waves. Dirac particles are coming onto a black hole, and they are getting scattered by the black hole. Okay. So the problem was very interesting and uh, he told me that it, it will be very interesting even for quantum gravity because uh, in this case you really want to know the interaction uh, between the Dirac particle when the particles uh, Compton wavelength is comparable to the horizon size. So you are really talking of uh, quantum black holes which are interacting and scattering uh, the Dirac waves. So you basically couple them together and you get a second order differential equation on theta and uh, the way to solve it was to of course using the spin weighted spheroidal harmonics that yesterday uh, talk, you, um, somebody talked about, Sherubini and other, uh, others, Professor Lee of course worked on this uh, in electromagnetic and, uh, gravitational wave but this, this part, these are massive particles. So these are little more complicated, massive particles and so the uh, the solution was uh, written the solution that comes out also has the mass of the particle included in it so what you have to do is to uh, i i did it in two different ways one is to use the uh, perturbation technique perturbation uh, technique uh, using a into sigma a is the car parameter and sigma is the frequency of the incoming wave that is the uh, perturbation um, parameter A into sigma and I, I went up to sixth order perturbation, 
sixth order perturbation to solve the equation that was in 1983 long time ago so these are the okay you can see the the, the value of the uh, lambda lambda up to sixth order lambda is the separation constant of the theta and the uh, radial equation so once you know lambda lambda is basically eigen value of the problem once you know lambda you also know the eigen function of the problem so you basically know how the theta, the theta dependent part of the wave function okay the wave functions look very very smooth and nice you know these are the uh, wave functions in the theta component only so this is s is the theta dependent component for minus spin one half particles and uh, orbital quantum number was half and the m azimuthal quantum number was minus half so this is the particular region and sigma this is the uh, the parameters are the uh, various values of a sigma of course a sigma was perturbation parameter for general case but i even found some exact solution when this is the exact solution of the problem so it was very messy equation but it was surprising that it even allows an exact solution of the problem so uh, it was for uh, when the ratio of the particle mass to the frequency of the wave particle um, i mean the wave incoming wave is one when this ratio is one then it allows an exact solution for the spin plus minus one of particles uh, of course it is also true for the spin um, three by two particles it allows and it becomes a separation constant namely the eigen values become a compact form and the eigen functions are also compact form so this is the situation and then of course you tabulate them that time professor chandrasekhar was very uh, interested to uh, draw tables so he asked me to write table draw draw tables and write down the nature of the angular mo uh, separation constant as a function of the perturbation parameter a sigma in fact this is um, um, so a sigma. So the, the generally, the entire theta-dependent equation was solved. In fact, the same procedure was is now used for to solve the spin integral spin particles, massless fields. So uh, again, the theta component of the massless fields were also solved analytically back in 1983. This is the massless fields, and of course, the again the table for the electromagnetic and gravitational waves. So now the question is, uh, you know, after I I thought that people have generally solved the problem and uh, Generally, the problem is now. By now, I thought uh, that the people have already solved the radial equation. Okay, but uh, last year, to my surprise, I found that even after 15 years of the uh, of finding the separation constant lambda, lambda was very crucial to understand. If you know lambda, then only you can solve the radial equation. So even after finding the lambda, and even after 15 years, nobody solved the radial equation. So very surprising to it was very surprising to me, and. Uh, I started then so I took a student and I again we started solving the same problem now the radial dependence of the wave function and then we will combine these two solutions radial and theta then to find out the complete solution of the Dirac equation so that is one of the reasons why I started again after 15 years you know because I found that uh, I thought maybe people have already solved it and so on but I found nobody uh, solved it probably it is not a very important equation <laughs> Uh, eigen eigen values are of course uh, this is the eigen value this is the separation constant of the when you uh, when you take the entire Dirac equation in carb geometry of course you need a separation constant to separate the yeah now eigen values are written there eigen values are all I draw already the pictures hmm. this is the value of lambda square yeah this is the, these are the value of lambda square for different value of a sigma a sigma is the perturbation parameter and in fact all these tables they all match with the with, uh, dawn page later uh, calculated the same thing by new, by relaxation method and they basically match with the numbers these are sixth order perturbation solution and in one case of course as i said there is an exact solution of the eigen values again the number is 1 1.5 something like that. for schwarzschild geometry lambda is 1 for schwarzschild geometry it does not depend on sigma at all the eigen value is 1 uh, No, it is freely pro propagating. So you are, there is a black hole, and you are sending Dirac waves from infinity, and you are scattering them, and again they are going back to infinity. Yes, scattering solution, and you actually want to know what happens to the eigenvalue and the eigenfunction. Okay, 
so this is basically the theta dependent part of the eigen function the total uh, solution is of course a uh, yeah. so total solution of course has a theta dependent part and the radial dependent part as well as the uh, e to the power i phi you know this is the e to the power i m phi plus i uh, sigma t this is the t phi and t dependence of the wave function of the Dirac wave the radial dependence and theta dependence so a long time ago I solved the theta and now the question is how this radial wave function looks like so that we can now find out what is the wave function of the scattered Dirac wave from the black hole. So again I take the same equation as Chandrasekhar did same wave function as Chandrasekhar did so this is the radial wave function here again the spin minus spin half and spin minus half they are coupled equations again spin minus half and spin plus half they are coupled equations they are basically square root of the Klein Gordon equation uh, in, uh, in normal uh, quantum mechanics but if you can easily uh, substitute one in the other and then obtain a full fledged second order differential equation that I will come later. So these are the uh, operators d n d uh, they are basically derivatives you know del del r then some quantity uh, another quantity depending on the location of the horizon and so on and these are standard this is all taken from Chandrasekhar's paper 1976. So this is the radial equation and this is the theta equation that has been already solved as I pointed out. So I will now present the solution in the radial direction very interesting solutions. Now as I said the exact solution I already found this was uh, lambda squared and uh, this is the spin weighted spheroidal harmonics this also depends on the mass of the particle um, because sigma is same as the mass actually in this particular case sigma by m, m sub t is equal to 1 and there are all these quantities p, uh, y, x etc they are basically the collection of the Klebs Gordon coefficients p is f of l l x of l plus 1 to l plus 1 y goes to l to l plus 1 you also have the conjugates p bar x bar and y bar and where f l1 l2 is coming from the uh, products of the Klebs Gordon coefficients ok. Now to obtain the solution of the uh, solution of the radial equation I first transform the radial coordinate boyer Lindquist coordinate r to r star r star ok. This r star this again the Chandrasekhar suggested that this is this will make this equation much easier to easier the equations will look much easier uh, much simpler form if we change the transformation uh, r to r plus r star hat you can see that the horizon uh, now shifted from um, r plus to infinity minus infinity so in the in this r star hat coordinate at r equal to r plus which is the horizon log 0 is minus infinity and so um, the r star goes to minus infinity so now you have the a new coordinate system where the uh, uh, it is not going from the horizon to plus infinity but it is going from minus infinity to plus infinity minus infinity is the location of the horizon. So of course the derivatives also you transform like this d d r star hat equal to goes to d d r etc and um, as I said that the r star hat goes to minus infinity provided of course sigma is uh, provided this term is non-zero ok and this term is zero at sigma equal to sigma s. Um, that is the place uh, so and if sigma less than sigma s Chandrasekhar suggested that one should be uh, sh maybe may find uh, what is known as super radiance you should be able to extract the energy out of the black hole by first done dumping Dirac uh, wave and then um, see if the outgoing flow outgoing Dirac wave has a larger than one reflection coefficient uh, apparently the, the, this in electromagnetic wave and the um, um, gravitational wave scattering the um, outflowing wind outflowing uh, sorry outflowing Dirac wave uh, does have a reflection coefficient larger than 1 in this region when sigma is less than sigma sub s but and this, there was a challenge whether the uh, car whether this Dirac particles also the integral half integral spin particles also extract energy out of the black holes ok we show that it does not uh, in fact the, that is because the because of the very nature of the potential that the Dirac waves feel in the presence of a black hole geometry. So the Dirac particles do not show super radiance and the electromagnetic and gravitational waves show super radiance I will show these results in a, in a moment. So the other transformation requires the wave functions, wave functions themselves we transform a little bit so as to remove the singularities 
um, from the problem and uh, and then again we transform r star r star to r star hat so that the equations becomes even simpler and it ultimately it becomes a second order differential equation so you transform this equation r star to r star hat and uh, then this this two uh, decouple two equations uh, spin minus half and spin plus half the coupled equations look very simple and uh, where w is the wrong scan of the problem where it is very much complicated uh, quantity and the if you substitute again one inside the other you ultimately get a second order differential equation very simple form like a Schrodinger equation in the flat space time. So you get a Schrodinger like equation in the flat space time um, uh, with provided you use r star hat coordinate ok r star hat coordinate and z is nothing but the um, combination of the spin plus half and spin minus one half particle you go to you basically change the base you rotate the uh, base and uh, w is of course here I have written down and the this equation looks like a Schrodinger kind of equation with v is the potential that the particles feel in the uh, black hole geometry. So and v is given by w square plus minus v plus minus goes at w square d w d r star hat it is an extremely complicated quantity this is w and so you have to take the derivative with respect to r star uh, hat and then that messy thing I could have written down in fact uh, why not uh, ok advent of modern science allows us a lot of things so I can uh, sort of show you the uh, v, this is the nature of the potential this is the potential v plus minus is given by this mesh ok and uh, uh, this is the pot but this is the potential that the incoming particles feel when they are falling onto a black hole now so the question is uh, now it is easy to solve this equations except that the potential is so messy it is not integrable so you have to do some tricks and a couple of tricks we did and both of them are uh, the results coming from both of them agreed so we were uh, satisfied that the tricks were not very bad tricks. Now before solving the problem a few things one has to remember uh, a few things uh, one has to remember is that the region of interest in the parameter space you know do you want to solve the entire all possible particle mass and all possible particle energy in all possible black hole mass things like that the answer is no because you are interested in those solutions where the particles really interact with the uh, with the black hole it is not just a uh, passive scattering like a hard body collision or elastic collision or something is really they interact namely the phase shift takes place in the wave function and as well as the, wave, the you know wavelength and the amplitude changes when you actually scatter from a black hole so you concentrate on that on the in the region of the parameter space where the Compton wavelength of the particle is comparable with the horizon of the horizon size of the curved black hole so that this is the horizon size of the curved black hole and this is the Compton wavelength so in the dimensionless unit when you go to g equal to c equal to h bar equal to 1 it becomes 1 over m sub t goes to the as the m square or m square minus a square. The next criteria is again you concentrate in the situation where the frequency of the incoming wave is basically, basically the light crossing time the inverse of the frequency of the uh, incoming wave namely sigma inverse is the basically the light crossing time of the black hole ok because that is the time when black hole light will cross as well as the particle will also cross very very in a similar time scale so you concentrate your sol your, uh, your focus the parameter space in those regions where these two time scales match as well as the two length scales match roughly speaking you does not have to be exactly matching maybe factor of within a factor of 5 10 is ok but you concentrate on in that region yeah, and uh, secondly you also uh, realize that if you take the potential as, as uh, even if it is messy it is it is of course it has to behave like a classical uh, potential from a, uh, from a point mass object at infinity this is really square of the potential you see this w square and so on so this you have to take the asymptotic property of this potential it really goes like m p square m p is the mass of the particle square at infinity so um, ultimately we are interested to um, uh, to classify also the type of the solutions depending on the initial energy of the wave whether the initial energy is larger than the larger than sigma or whether it is going to hit the potential barrier 
uh, and tunneling effect is, take, uh, is taking place just like the quantum mechanics or it is always staying on the top of the potential so that uh, the solution is always um, uh, the wave number is always real you know it, it, may, it may be the case that where the potential is like this it may hit the potential barrier and inside the potential it will become the wave number will become imaginary and therefore again you have to solve it separately. So you again concentrate on a small parameter space here I have plotted the sigma m sub t you remove this region of the parameter space completely we are not interested in, in, uh, in uh, region where the energy of the incoming particle is less than the rest mass of the particle that is the triviality. So this part goes and so you will uh, concentrate on this region of the parameter space but again this region will have two, two separate um, interesting point as I pointed out that there are two types of potential can uh, two types of things can take place one is the sigma square at infinity can be always larger compared to the nature than the potential because the shape of the potential is changing shape of the potential depends on the mass of the particle the incoming sigma and it is a very messy thing as I pointed out to you it is a very messy thing and that depends on the mass of the particle as well as the sigma of the particle and so on so obviously uh, the shape is always changing you do not imagine that if you change the mass or sigma the potential remains the same potential itself is changing because the particle mass is uh, comparable to the mass of the black hole uh, quantum wavelength if you check that the sigma is roughly of the order of the yeah in fact here so we are dealing with very small quantum black holes okay sigma of the order of this of the order of m sub t so in if we choose mass of the particle black hole to be one in this unit you will see that is of the order of 1 sigma m t etc in fact sigma is equal to m t when the situations are exactly equal when the light crossing time is same as the, the inverse of the frequency or the Compton wavelength is same of the mass of the uh, horizon of the black hole sigma is equal to m sub t that is on this line ok. So on this line situation is very interesting and we like to stay close to this line that is the close uh, interesting part of the parameter space. And now the uh, another interesting part comes about the nature of the potential as I said that the, when the particle when the Dirac wave is falling onto a black hole the nature of the potential depends on sigma square and the mass of the particle and so on and potential can change from this time this type to this type in one case the uh, energy of the particle remains above the potential so the wave number is always real it is always a sinusoidal uh, pro, you know, collection of the uh, sinusoidal waves propagating back and forth and getting reflected from the black hole uh, horizon etc some part is getting transmitted some part is getting reflected and in fact it is getting reflected and transmitted at each point each point because it is not a there is a step barrier where you should wait until you hit the barrier or something it is a it is a constantly changing potential it is like a classical problem we did in bachelors uh, that you take a stream and you um, you pluck it or something you have a normal uh, mode of oscillation but if you take the string with a varying sigma varying mass per unit length you will see that if you if you wave starts propagating it will start reflecting from each point so uh, there will be reflection and transmission coefficient uh, at each point if they, if the, the wave does not have to wait until the end of that uh, other end of the string to reflect back changing with distance and efficiency will be changing with distance and at the same time you can have another kind of potential a part of it can decay you know, the sigma square is here it is hitting the potential part of it will be decaying and then it will start continuing into the black hole ok remember the Nyaster had coordinate horizon is at minus infinity and this is a plus infinity from where you send those incoming waves so this is interesting problem so again I want to uh, separate the parameter space a little bit uh, I want to show the parameter space division now this is our sigma equal to m sub t where most of the things should be interesting close to this line and uh, this region can be divided into two regions one is region 1 one is region 2 in region 1 in this region the potential behaves like this so you classify it uh, in two different types of potentials in region 1 it behaves like this in region 2 it behaves like this ok so why do you have to treat it separately because it is going to decay inside and well uh, the, the incoming wave is going to decay but the reflected wave is going to decay from the other side so you have to be very careful um, that is the situation and these are the contours of constant something ok what something is, uh, is that 
दिस इज कॉन्ट ऑफ कॉन्स्टेंट वन ओवर के स्क्वायर डी के डी डी के डी एक्स और डी के डी आर्सर है दिस इज दिस बेसिकली टेल्स यू वेदर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम बाई डब्ल्यू के बी अप्रोक्सीमेशन वेदर द डब्ल्यू के बी अप्रोक्सीमेशन इज गोइंग टू बी वैलिड ऑन नॉट वन रिमेम्बर फॉर डब्ल्यू के बी अप्रोक्सीमेशन टू रिमेन वैलिड वन ओवर के स्क्वायर डी के डी डी एक्स should be very very less than 1 should be less than 1 namely the wave number or the wave length of the particle should be changing slowly slowly enough so and uh, these are the contours of constant this quantity maximum value of this quantity so you take a parameter you take a sigma you take some m sub t and you find out if you come from infinity to the black hole what is the largest value of this quantity if this quantity is larger than 0.1 or something you know that the wkb approximation is going is, is not going to be valid for instance here if you if you hit the potential at this point where you have hit the wave number k is zero so wave length is um, uh, sorry k is zero and therefore one over k square dk dx is going to be infinity so clearly uh, close to this region you are not going to uh, use you, you should not be able to use wkb that is point number 1 point number 2 is um well uh, however so one has to use a complete differ method by using airy function and so on uh, within uh, near, near this heating heating place so again i want to remind you these are the if we if we want to solve the problem by wkb approximation then we find that we cannot solve the problem for region 2 for obvious reason because for region 2 in these two points the wkb approximation definitely breaks down because k becomes zero k is the wave number Here is the definition of the k. K is the wave number of the particle, which is same as square root of sigma square minus v, the potential. So this is the wave number of the particle, which is instantaneously changing as the potential changes. And u is the iconal integral of k dA dA star hat. So if you want to solve it by WKB method, let us say you have to solve it uh, the wave number wave wave function. Uh, behaves like a plus square root of k e to the power i u and so on, and then you use this uh, WKB approximation carefully so that you and also a combination of the Airy function and the WKB approximation so as to get the complete solution. And the sum of the coefficients must be equal to one. So it's a plus a square e minus square is k, and they are of course related to the reflection and transmission coefficients. Okay, how much is getting reflected and how much is getting transmitted through the black hole. the other method the simpler method which i found is very useful is you take the potential as it is and you replace it by a large number of steps like a steps in the classical uh, potential so in in bsc in in bsc we are uh, we are familiar uh, with solving this kind of problem but what i want to i did was you take this potential and just replace it by a large number of la large number of steps and then uh, use the Uh, junction condition at each step you you can take 20000 steps okay nevertheless you can solve the problem easily and uh, each at each point at each step of course you ensure that the wave function are continuous as well as the derivatives are also continuous just like in the classical mechanics problem so it's a really simple problem and so after solving this we found that uh, a little bit embarrassing the why is that uh, uh, you know the, this could um is so simple you know that we they were bothered by that so you take this potential and then uh, replace by a large number of steps and if at each step you use the uh, you use the uh, standard classical mechanics approximations now what are the solutions you get the very interesting solutions so this is one situation uh, let us say this is the A particle. Uh, this is the parameter space. You take the curve parameter 0.5. The absolutely exact uh, the solution now. There is no uh, approximation. A is the 0.5. Sigma is 0.8. Uh, orbital angular momentum is half. Uh, mass of the, sorry, mass of the particle is point. Uh, this is a mistake. Mass of the particle is point, point 0.8. And um, m, the azimuthal quantum number, is Minus one half. So very, very quickly, I wrote. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, I got some. Thanks. Yes, you can go. Uh, sorry. What is the condition on the wave function near singularity? 
Yes, yeah. oh, that is the uh, transmitted the boundary condition on the inner. So we have to use the boundary condition that on the horizon matter is only incoming flux on the horizon itself. Okay, and the actual value will be determined automatically, but the, it is only the one component I am keeping. The other component is so there is no reflection from the horizon. Okay, and um, if we want to have if we want to have uh, super radiance, it really takes place at a different place. R equal to alpha, where the uh, potential diverges. Potential does not diverge on the horizon. Potential diverges at some other place. I'll, I'll come to that, okay? When it does, it does diverge at a different place. So, problem is not with the horizon. Problem is with the somewhere else. Okay, so this is the, uh, these are the variations of the transmission coefficient and the reflection coefficient. Sum is equal to 1 always. And uh, you change the mass of the particle, you find from point, let us say sigma equal to point 0.8 all the time. So this is a azimuthal quantum number, uh, a m equal to minus half, orbital half, a equal to 0.8, a equal to sigma equal to 0.8, a equal to 0.5, reflection transmission coefficient, mass of the particle is varying now. We wanted to see how the, uh, of course the potential is changing and how the reflection and transmission coefficients are changing. Or, you have to remember that at infinity, at minus infinity is the horizon, the transmission has already become um, no, 100%. Uh, much close to the horizon. at zero means uh, let us say just outside the horizon, about uh, two social areas or something. And from zero to minus infinity is between two social areas to one social area. Basically, you stretch that very close to the black hole, you stretch that uh, to a large uh, extent so that you can follow the wave as close to the horizon as possible and as accurately as possible. So, basically, this is the beauty of this transformation from arc to arc star hat. So, transmission coefficient becomes almost one even outside the horizon, like two swatch, almost two swatch in radius, and reflection coefficient has become zero, okay. Independent of the mass of the particle and so on, if you take the wave function, how the wave functions look like, you find that the wave functions really do not depend on the mass, as, uh, as you are coming close to the black hole, uh, the particle mass is immaterial, uh, uh, but as you go away from the black hole, the particles of different mass are scattered differently with different amplitude and so on. Uh, it's like a, so we were saying that as if it is a black hole is acting like a mass spectrograph or something. You, you send a Dirac wave or a mixed Dirac wave of different uh, mass uh, variation, the black hole will automatically scatter them separately, uh, with, distinguish them and differently it will scatter. But close to the black hole horizon as is expected, it does not matter what the mass of the black hole is, mass of the particle is immaterial. So this is the nature of the reflection coefficient. If you want to now combine the nature of the solution, uh, the theta and the R component, you know, theta solution of 1984 and the R solution 1999, if you combine them together, so this is the theta, this is the uh, vertical direction, Z. Okay, so this is Z, this is uh, radial direction, R, R, this is now actually R, this is not R sir hat. Okay. This one, this is the contours of constant amplitudes. The wave is going like this. I have plotted here in three dimensional form. So this is the R direction, this is the Z direction and this is the height of the wave. So wave is, wave is going like this and you are just taking the cross section of the wave. So the cross section looks like this. This is the contours of constant um, amplitude basically. You are just cutting the waves and this is a vertical direction. So it, it does distinguish the theta direction very strongly and uh, wave, wave amplitude or the wave number also you can see very easy to understand actually this behavior I should have spent some more time so if you take the potential here if you take the potential like this and if you send a wave of constant sigma of course the uh, difference is going to get bigger and bigger as you approach the black hole and k goes bigger means wavelength grows smaller so you get smaller and smaller wavelength uh, so this is very easy to understand this, is, this behavior so the wavelength gets smaller and smaller as you come closer and closer to the black hole, okay. So this is a typical solution of the Dirac equation in a car black hole geometry. You can write down the real part, you can write down the imaginary part, you can do all kinds of things with the solutions now um, and that they, you can see that the amplitude has become one even outside the horizon already. Namely, it is not allowing anything to get reflected anymore, 100 percent transmitted, much, uh, much outside the horizon, it does not have to wait until the horizon itself.
the next problem was of course to take the situation where the potential is now we are going to region 2 where it is going to hit the potential okay i have not drawn the potential uh, in the real scale all i have done is take the potential all i have done is to take the potential and shift it by 2 so as to, so that we can see the potential separately here and then i have plot the uh, real part of the uh, amplitude real part of the amplitude of the z plus the wave and you can see that the wave is getting a decay inside the inside the potential it is getting tunneling effect is uh, going on so and that due to tunneling effect and the part of is reflected back so that is also tunneling effect there is a uh, there is a peak there and then ultimately it enters into black hole again independent of the mass of the particle here the parameters are different here a equal to 0.95 almost extremely rotating per black hole and the, because otherwise the potential will not change the potential depends on the on the nature on the value of a car parameter of course very strongly so this is again another solution where it's from the region 2 where the matter is actually hitting the potential barrier and it is getting uh, diluted uh, it is getting uh, tunnel tun tunneling it tunnels to the potential barrier and enters into black hole black, uh, you see the coordinate is minus 20 and minus infinity is the real horizon minus 20 is really 0 0.00001 person radius away from the horizon it is just uh, just outside the horizon due to numerical reason we could not go to the now if we solve this equation uh, if we solve the equation in a different method like wkb a little bit corrected a uh, modified wkb and as well as the step function they all agree the both of them both the uh, you know both the methods are fundamentally correct methods both of them produce the same action, uh, same uh, reflection and the transmission coefficients. So we are happy that uh, the, so both the methods are correct. The next, the, uh, in the next couple of minutes, I am almost through actually. Next couple of minutes, we are spend the spend time when this question of the super radiance comes. Whether the uh, uh, will, whether it is whether it is possible to extract energy out of the rotational uh, motion or the uh, uh, rotational uh, energy of the black hole from by putting Dirac waves. Okay, if you do that, if you send, the, if you go to the region where sigma less than sigma s, the sigma less than sigma s, where it is supposed to show super radiance because the potential does diverge. Potential diverges at r equal to alpha. Uh, in fact, I wrote here in detail. Potential for sigma less than sigma s, v is multi multivalent function for sigma less than sigma s g is a multivalent function and it diverges at r equal to alpha okay and the question and since this alpha is outside the horizon you would expect that it will be reflected from the uh, it will be reflected uh, from that diverging potential and the reflection coefficient will be larger than one transmission coefficient will be less than one so less than zero so that sum is still one but the reflection uh, wave will have more amplitude than incoming wave at infinity so that there is super radiance. Unfortunately, it does not. Even before you solve the problem, you know that the potential is diverging like r minus alpha to the power whole cube uh, at, the diverging, at the diverging point. Whereas, um, whereas um, potential, if you uh, do it uh, the electromagnetic or the gravitational, it typically behaves like r minus alpha to the power 4, much steeper variation as well as symmetric variation um, so if the potential diverges like this it comes back like this whereas in the case of uh, spin half or spin 3 by 2 potential diverges like this but comes back from the negative side so it becomes more attractive potential beyond the uh, diverging point so actually instead of reflecting more than 100 percent it really transmits uh, the wave sucks the wave in uh, so it is it is uh, there is no question of super radiance we again solve this problem is the same thing the potential goes up diverges like this and it comes back like that in r star hat uh, in r star hat coordinate is multiple valid function but in r star coordinate in, in sorry in r coordinate potential diverges like this and it comes back like that okay potential it, it is r star hat coordinate so it is multiple valid function one is the repulsive potential one is the other part is the attractive potential and ultimately if you calculate the reflection and transmission coefficient it is not larger than 1. Reflection coefficient is marginally less than 1.99997, something like that. But it is not produ producing any super radiance. So basically the conclusion is that uh, we have been able to
solve the Dirac equation in carb black hole geometry and to our knowledge quite satisfactorily and we have been we have been able to find a proof that it does not show super radiance uh, uh, unlike gravitational wave or the uh, electromagnetic wave spin up things uh, behave completely differently and uh, the black hole acts like a mass spectrograph kind of thing you know it does differentiate the particles of different mass uh, i think these are the major conclusions thank you When it touches, uh -huh. no, nothing happens particularly. When it touches, of course, the k equals to zero because the wave number is equal to square root of sigma square minus v. So wave number is zero, and therefore the wave length is infinity. And so you cannot solve it by double cable method. You have to solve it by a ARI function using a completely different method. But if you use the state potential method, uh, it does not matter. Well, state potential method, method does not even care about whether it touches or not. But if you want to do analytically, like WKB or something, you have to be very careful because WKB approximation breaks down in that situation. Because uh, sigma becomes same as potential and so k is 0. The k is 0 and therefore wavelength is uh, 1 over k squared dk dx is infinity. Uh, there seems to be a uh, the reaction and the uh, reaction that is modern by mass reaction and appearance in this case uh, where the parameter happens that's that is yeah no we have crystal phenomenon but uh, obviously to be because that's not what happens actually nothing is expected to happen because you see classically either the energy is always above the potential or it can hit the potential and come back but there Solutions will be different, but nothing very exciting takes place, you know, when you go from one potential to another. And therefore, it is, uh, when it even touches, which is the middle, intermediate between these two cases, nothing particular happens. Only thing is that the method of solution has to be different. That's all. This is Dirac equation you are talking about or? But uh, only the minus half spin fellows, uh, wait a minute. No, they the spin minus of you. I have not, uh, I have not see, uh, checked separately whether the spin plus half behaves differently from spin minus half or not. But all I know is that the spin and m, the azimuthal angular momentum uh, quantum number m, has to be of opposite sign to have interesting solution. So this, I, so all the solutions I have concentrated on spin plus one half. Uh, this is actually a mixture of spin plus, spin plus half and spin minus half because we rotated the, uh, you know, uh, orthogonal. Uh, a wave functions to z plus and z minus which is combination of spin plus and spin minus. So all we have to do is to just now un, uh, to come back to the spin plus and, and, and check if the spin plus up thing is really uh, larger compared to the spin minus. Okay. Uh, if you can refer, if you can give me the reference maybe we can check if we also behave. But your solution is a much much away from the black hole for astrophysical black holes, right? For, for astrophysical black holes, for deep black holes. Yeah, but the, uh, the way 
Yeah, I, I was not expecting anything interesting because it is a, it's a big black hole and wavelength is coming, you know, micron size and so you see here, it's like a, it, there will be only a small phase shift in the, in the outgoing wave. So I was not expecting very exciting result when the black hole is big. Thank you, Speaker, again.